kind of boy. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, sorry. Good, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dan Messio Questions, uh, episode uh, 419. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to uh, review the questions and uh, answers given on the Dan Messio Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Richard Hearn. Richard uh, is based in Thailand. Uh, he's um, uh, uh, currently working on uh, um, as Australian sites. Um, that actually appears, Richard, in the film. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, um, We've also got Tim Kappa. Tim uh, is a webmaster of uh, no uh, onlineownership.com. See, I'm out of out of out of um, the habit of doing this, aren't I? Uh, Tim is also a Google product expert uh, in the uh, Google My Business community. Masataki Wasser is webmaster of washerweb.net, um, and he is also a Google product expert. Uh, in the AdSense uh, community. And David Razam is a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex uh, on the sunny south of uh, England. And um, David can be found at davidrazam.com. All right, we have 12, second, uh, 12 uh, questions tonight. Um, here we are. This this one is um, is titled uh, uh, "Is Outbound Link Stuffing Also Bad?" Uh, he said, "If keyword stuffing is bad, is outbank, outback, outbound uh, link stuffing also bad? Will a page be penalised if every other sentence has an out, outbound link to high ranking domains like the?" Uh, New York Times or Reuters or, or expert sites? I think it's more mad than bad. Why, why would you do it? Um, I wouldn't bother. Yeah, um, but um, why? why uh, why why shouldn't they bother, David? Because um, it will uh, make the page look horrible, for one thing, um, and ruin user experience. Um, it will, um, yes, it'll just make it look horrible. No, what, what's the point? There's this idea that if you, if you uh, link to lots of... Uh, um, uh, lo lo lots of high uh, quality sites that you will get some sort of kickback from it. Um, so that's that's the idea, but I don't think that um, uh, I don't think it will um, help your ranking. Um, so yes, if it won't help your ranking, why bother? Yeah, true, true enough. All right, um, that's it's for Juan Juan Delase Jr. And uh, that's your lot for the night, Juan. Okay, uh, let's go to the next. Um, no, it's another one from Juan, uh, and it's titled "It Sounds Like a Link Farm." He said, that, "Is it an effective link building strategy to buy many cheap domains?" And then add links to them that uh, point to your main site. I see every, uh, a couple of shake, shaking heads. If it walks like a, a link farm and quacks like a link farm, it probably is a link farm. Um, oh, this is just one of those ancient pieces of, of, of trickery that uh, still lives on on the internet, isn't it? Um, you know, why do it when if you end up building a link farm, 
uh, Google will slap you for it. Um, so why, you know, it's a load of work for no end. Yeah. Yep, for no. sure. Your your time and your money and your your resources are will be much better spent doing something uh, more useful. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right. Um, and guest on the Sitbon uh, gives us our third question on our run list tonight. Uh, it's titled. Uh, uh, search engine optimization value in, in caption and description for photos. Um, besides alt text and title, uh, is there any uh, SEO value in caption and description? Uh, P.S. Uh, did any of you notice that Facebook now gives us text uh, editing options um, when you uh, highlight text. I think the reference here is to WordPress, by the way. The four uh, property, properties that he mentions are actually what the WordPress uh, media editor gives you. Um, and the answer is, well, it depends, but in general, uh, the caption is shown as the fig caption, and WordPress defaults to a figure for for the image object in HTML. Uh, the description, I, I'm not 100% sure where it's used on the front end of WordPress, but I know that Google will use any text that's in the same parent element. If it's useful, they'll use any text in the same parent element as the image itself. So it's like adjacent text. So there's, there's value in all of those. And then the other place there'd be value would be in file names and also folder names. So there is actually value though. They will, as far as I know, they'll derive some of the, some of the information that, that they assign to the image, they'll derive from both the file name and the folder name. And I, I would always say, yeah, fill in the caption. Alt text should be what's on the image, and the caption could be something associated with the image, but there's definitely value. Thank you, Richard. OK, let's, let's um, roll on if there's no objection to the next. OK. Gaston Sitbon has another one. He said it's titled that when there is punctuation next to keywords, Gaston said that here's a dumb question. Does Google treat keywords differently when there's punctuation next to them? He said, I'll give you an example. Should I write my sentence, what's the difference between cappuccino latte and flat white? Um, or sh should I write, what's the difference between cappuccino latte and flat white? In the second sentence, I'm putting a space between the keywords and the commas uh, and uh, the question mark. The second one doesn't feel natural, but if someone searches for what's the difference between a flat white and cappuccino, I want, me, I want them to find my answer. So that's why I'm hesitant to have punctuation right beside uh, some of the, the uh, key, some of the words. I think that uh, Google has gone um, a little bit beyond um, these exact matching ideas. It did that a long, long time ago. Um, it's actually very good at picking up on uh, natural variations and even unnatural variations. Um, and I would call these unnatural variations. Um, just write the stuff, write the stuff as well as you can and Google will sort it out for you. You won't get any extra points for, for doing um, bad English um, because someone might search on bad English or something. So um, just write it properly. And in fact, bad English is probably more likely to, to 
to create a problem for you these days because they seem to be quite hot on on using things like punctuation and spelling etc to determine some of the quality metrics they're using for pages so um it's an interesting one you're dead right they've moved well beyond the uh, the idea of matching strings in terms of search queries so you know it's really moved on beyond even that and the beyond phrases and it's into entities etc now uh there are still some cases i think though where punctuation can deliver different results believe it or not so some of what he's saying could be valid in some edge cases not in the case in the example he gave but i think there are as far as i know i know some keywords where punctuation can be used in certain terms but they're not in it's not in sentences or phrases it, it's it's mainly things like hyphenated words and where you can get different results based on the punctuation but in general uh you know david is dead right you you, you should just write really good content and not be thinking about trying to match a sentence that's not how it works anymore excellent thank you david thank you richard Okay, moving on to number five on our run list. It's titled um, QA versus FAQ schema. Um, does anyone have a, a, a preference? Um, Gaston Sitbon uh, asks, and uh, he goes on to say, I'm making it an, an FAQ page that has a bunch of independent blocks. Um, these are like small individual pages within one big page uh, that um, each individually uh, is a separate question with an answer for the uh, overall page i'm going to use faq schema but i'm wondering if i should use the qa schema for each of those uh, individual blocks uh, any thoughts on which one is best I'll leave this question to uh, in a in a moment, uh, um, but uh, I must mention Brenda Malone uh, for her tireless uh, work in in marshalling uh, um, people through through the week on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Well, if no one gives an opinion, I'm going to say I'd go for FAQ schema, but that's mainly because I, I believe that the QA, the display of the QA widget is is not as frequent. I don't think that as many sites can get get that that sort of that 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 feature within search as FAQs. I think that FAQs are pretty easy to implement. It's quite interesting. You do get a bit more uh, surface area in the SERP with them. Um, I'm not 100% convinced they lead to more traffic or anything else for you, but they might get you a bit more exposure for your brand, etc. So I'd probably go to FAQs because it also, it also focuses you on answering more questions than just one. Um, and that can be quite useful. Like questions and answers content is, it, it does pretty well for traffic. So probably I go with FAQ. And I'd probably agree with you. <laughs> okay, let's um, roll down to number six on our run list. It's from Sakib Shadman. It's titled question regarding keyword density um starting with dumb seo question regarding keyword density we all know keeping a two point uh, the two to three percent uh, of total word content as the main focus keyword density is ideal no that's not true we, we don't know that at all today my main keyword is um, uh, sick led screens that work which is five words and my article is a thousand words hmm. so uh, two to three percent is 20 to 30 keywords so should i use my main keyword six led screens that work 
20 to 30 times. Oh, good. No, I can't read this anymore. Um, <laughs> the the answer is no, we don't already. We know, but we do not all know uh, anything about keyword density because keyword density is something that died with the dinosaurs. Um, establish your keywords, but use them within the content in a natural way. Don't don't have this notion of having to try and take them and squeeze them in and mess up your content. Uh, it won't get you anywhere. Um, going back to, was it the last question? No, the question before. Um, Google doesn't work that way anymore. Um, it's uh, It's got a lot more sophisticated. It doesn't just count words and key phrases and stuff. So... Um, um forget keyword density is is my uh um is my answer thank you david it's even worse because the poor guy he probably doesn't realize it but he's going to be classified as a review site because that query is going to be a review type query so um he's going to uh, have yes. with, the, with the reviews classifier and and see how he comes out of it and certainly if he goes into keyword density he's not going to do very well with the reviews classifier so um yeah he he, he if, if that's his niche he should probably try and do a little bit of research on on the reviews update that that google launched and and figure out which review sites do really well and why and you're going to be deep into the the eat stuff with that so yeah that's I, you know, I, I, I feel for the, the, the person a little bit like, because they're, they're obviously trying to learn this stuff and it's very easy to get to, to get misdirected. I think with some of the SEO information, like the keyword density, but he's going to have a real challenge for himself. And, and I wish him the best of luck with, with his endeavors with that. That's really what uh, the SEO questions is about. Um, and uh, we, we attempt to um, sift through the chaff. Um, okay. Um, oh, I've forgotten his name. Um, anyway, the, the trailing slash in uh, um, Google Search Console uh, on one of uh, his um, uh, subdomains is that normal is it the same property in google search console as the one without the trailing slash Nathan Gadai, I think, I think his name was, it is. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. You see, here I am, um, um, I, I'll, we'll finish the, the, this recording. I'm going to have to spend another hour editing it. Tim, how do you pronounce your 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 surname again? Kent. I mean, Kent. Uh, <laughs> oh, Thank you very much. Well, I put that to bed anyway, so <laughs> we don't need to worry about that little issue anymore. So, going back to the question, uh, yeah, the trailing slide is uh, very normal. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm sadly lost. You'll probably lose your account now because I believe Tim is good at that, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I get suspended from everything. Oh, you'll never get suspended from here, Tim. All right. Uh, now oh, I'm shit. I thought, I thought he was going to be suspended for a while there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Navid Raymond uh, asked the question total creating more backlinks or making backlinks stronger. Uh, he's uh, he then rephrased it what's better, creating more backlinks or making backlinks stronger by creating backlinks for them as well. Uh, uh, and is this, is this friend, friend week John, or something? Yeah, sorry, David. Go on. Is this backlink week or something? Um, yes. Um, oh, uh, I don't think either's good. <laughs> um, it, it's another one of these. What do you want to spend your time doing? Yes, it? it's it's you know we, we've been here before this week, but it is a, another. What do you want to spend your time doing? And also, what what can you guarantee quality that will help your um, your SEO, your your digital marketing? You. Pitting about with, with links doesn't seem to be a very sensible way of getting quality into your into your endeavours, um, and it's uh, as as we've said, it's you know not a, not a good way to spend your time, whatever you do. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably going to be a few niches or verticals where, where it makes sense to be doing this, where everyone does it, everyone sort of spams their way into results. But like, if you're asking here, it probably means that you're not like that sophisticated in terms of, of that sort of niche. So like, this is definitely, you know, it's just definitely where's the, the benefit of doing this versus the cost. And, and compare that to what you do, you put your time into creating something very useful. Um, it's not easy to get links these days, you know, because it's, the web's so big. It's not easy to get noticed, but like he's building links, he's creating back backlinks, or he's creating more backlinks to those backlinks. But like he's creating them all, and that's probably really going to be the test of of what's going to stand up in the longer term. Like the stuff you create yourself over time, it's going to have just decreasing value as Google becomes more sophisticated at figuring out that this isn't real. And I think they're pretty damn good at it these days. So it, it, you're not investing for the long term with, with this strategy. That would be what I would say. Hmm. Yes, exactly. All right, so let's roll on to number nine on the analyst. Um, I should mention um, uh, our, our good friend uh, Eamon Johns uh, for his uh, answer on uh, that uh, question uh, in the WCA Questions Facebook group. This is one from Mariam Sharif. Uh, it's titled Outsourcing Your Link Building Creation. Uh, Mariam said, is it a, a good link building strategy to find an outsourcing company um, that's a novel idea. Um, that would blog and create quality links in your niche. Um, <laughs> are you are you about to uh, lead off on this, Tim? Or um... well, I'm just a quick one. So. <laughs> I'm guessing it could be, but if you, but it's like anything, <clears throat> you, you know, in theory that this could be potentially a problem, uh, for your site as well as Google. Um, so I'm guessing at the end of the day, it's due diligence on who it is that you know yeah mm. but i the, think you may be yeah i don't know the the odds are that you are going to get um someone or um 
a machine somewhere that's going to put a load of links in um, that will be rubbish. Um, and unless you've got a lot of money to uh, to pay for um, an outsourced um, person or agency who will do the job properly, uh, the odds are you're going to get um, a load of spammers. <clears throat> so uh, be very, very careful. The odds are that you will be wasting your money at the very least. Yeah, it's human nature, isn't it? I'll, I'll try yeah. to know, just just to just to give a sort of like a little bit of a counter to that. I would say that like. 60 to 70 percent of enterprise seo is exactly what's been described there <laughs> yeah honest, at, the, at the really high levels like that's mm. that's what what they're doing like yeah. i see the proposals quite frequently you know where now we're talking big money we're not talking small money and we're, and we're talking mm. quality and very good management services etc but like Quite literally, what what was what was described there is is something that gets pitched to enterprise SEO clients daily. That's that's the way it works. So, I mean, it's not that it can't work. It can. It just depends on you know the quality of it and the reach of it and where it's where it's going. Um, but if you're at the lower end of it, uh, yeah, you you don't want to be there. I'd say. And yeah, the biggest the bigger biggest thing with it though is that like. A third party is never going to know your business as well as you know your business. And the best, the best content, the best blogs, etc., in the world are are by people who are fanatical about what they're talking about, not who are just writing about some topic that they were given because that's the the client's topic. So, you know, it's very unlikely you're going to get good quality. And even the enterprise SEO, it's the same. The quality they get. Because a lot of it's written by generalists, even though they're very clever and very well educated people, they they don't have the passion, they don't have the knowledge in terms of 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 the product or the technology involved, whatever it is you do. So and there's some in the comments also we see some very good feedback, some very good advice, I think. Yeah. All right, let's move on to number 10. And we thank um, Eamon Johns uh, for his contribution. Nathan G'day, um asked a question. It's titled Low Quality Links, Follow or No Follow. Um, Nathan said, uh, so if, if Google automatically ignores links that are low quality in most cases, I do not need to uh, disavow them in most cases, but if I have links like a WhatsApp link um, that are an actual page uh, on the web, uh, do I need to no follow it or is it considered a no follow by Google like tell uh, and um, uh, mail uh, two links? Does anyone know what he says if I have links like a WhatsApp link? Is he is he mean a link to or a link from or mm. what, what like is it, 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 it he mentions like an at tell you know a, 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 a tell link, you know, a telephone link or it sounds to me like it's an outbound link from his site going to a WhatsApp, like WhatsApp colon phone number or whatever it is. And I don't think Google is going to count those. Like, they don't have a target, if that's what he means. Like, if there's no target on those links. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I, he also mentions it in a WhatsApp page. I don't yeah. know. I think either way, it's it's an outbound link, because otherwise, you know, he can't affect that on someone else's side. You know, whether you follow... Unless he's paying for the link. Hmm. <laughs> but I, I don't understand this. No, I understood the question as Richard did. Low quality links, follow or no follow. Like low quality, what's he linking to? This is like I, it, it doesn't really make sense. But like, if he's just linking to a like, if it's a, some sort of WhatsApp link that opens in WhatsApp, 
uh, don't worry about it. It's, it's 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 nothing. Like it's not a link between two documents on the web. So I don't think there's any deal with it. But like in general, like if you're linking to something that's low quality, you need to be asked of why you're linking to it. And if it's an external site and you believe it's low quality, no follow away by all means. Knock yourself out with the no follows, or or just kill the link. Yeah. Yeah, why, why would you be linking to it if it's low quality? You know, you're, you're back to the, the, the question of uh, providing quality to your readers. And if you put rubbish links in, you're not doing so. Well, if you're quoting a rubbish link, you know, to um, support your argument, <laughs> then that might make sense. <laughs> well, yeah, you, what you're saying... This is a rubbish argument. I, I don't don't agree with it. Here's, here's a link to it. Yeah, or, you know, <laughs> this is what someone has said. Obviously, I disagree with it, and it's completely wrong. But, you know, uh, just to yeah. prove that it's been said by someone, I'm linking to it. You know what's fascinating? I mean, we've seen, like, what, the last four or five questions have all been about links and link building. And... What's sort of fascinating, like links have always like historically been been at the core of like what Google does in terms of ranking, and it, and I'm sure it 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 probably still is, but I don't think we've ever had a time sort of like in the sort of like nearly twenty years I've been looking at this stuff where links actually had potentially had less impact on the results than now. Like it's it's funny that people are still focused on on links as much in the in these questions. When actually there's so much more going on now that can change how your site ranks, etc. Links are don't get me wrong, they're still vital, but but they're not as they're they're less vital than they've been in I don't know how long, if ever. I think there's so many other things going on with quality and 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 content and entities and all these search features, etc. And you know, you've got this, you know, the EAT stuff. Like there's just a ton of stuff going on that you can focus on that probably actually are going to get you pretty good returns. I, I think they, I think it's down to simplicity. Uh, a link is a very easy thing to to uh, to understand. It's something that appears to be very easy to put in place. You know, for one thing, you can go onto Fiverr and uh, buy a bunch of them, or you can automate it, or Whatever, or you can even uh, buy buy some domains and set up a uh, a link farm, should you wish. Um, where the other things, um, you know, writing content isn't easy, um, and that I think that's why we keep coming back to links because it's on the face of it, it's a mechanical thing. Yeah, and you can count them. My God, yes. Yeah, it, it's just interesting. I think like there's, like if you're starting, if as long if you're starting something new, as long as you're not in a in a you know in a in an ultra competitive sort of niche or vertical, like there's potential for people to build really good sites with really good content with very little links that rank well. And uh, like that's what I see. I'm not saying that that's universally the case, but I think. There's definitely potential there, and people maybe don't need to think quite as much about the link aspect of it. And um, if you put the same sort of zeal into into your content and into what you're building and the user experience, I, I think you can get some pretty good returns without having to be overly focused on links themselves. That's that's just why I don't. Just an aside, I just think it's interesting that like a lot of the questions here have been about link building or building links into links. And again, don't get me wrong, I'm not discounting the value of links. They're still core to how Google ranks content, but I just see a lot a lot of potential outside of, of links these days. It's just interesting to, to, to say it when there's so many questions like this to the people who are asking as well. That, like, spend some time on your, your sites and your content and looking to see what can you do better than other people. And there's still potential there, huge potential. Thank you, Richard. 
Okay, let's roll on to number 11 on our run list. Uh, this one from Python K. Kamal. Um, it's titled, Do I Have to Do Separate Posts Focusing on Each Keyword? Uh, Python said, hello, I have a question on on-site SEO. Uh, let's say I want to rank in conveyor systems in Kenya. Um, conveyors in Kenya. Uh, do I have to do separate posts fo focusing on each keyword? Or can I do one long post with the two keywords in the content? Uh, how else can I go about it? We're back to our, I think I smell we're back to our good old friend Yoast here, aren't we? Which uh, tells us that uh, we should only focus on one key phrase or keyword in a page. Um, you can do what you like. You can focus on uh, both of them uh, on on one page. They're they're pretty they're pretty similar, aren't they? Really, conveyor systems in in Kenya, Kenya, um, and conveyors in Kenya. I suspect you might well um, be better off to uh, write one page. Um, I don't know. It's it, yeah, my, my from what's here, my, my guess is I would write one piece because I think I'd end up with two rather similar pages and I don't want really two rather similar pages. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's difficult to know without understanding the, the site and what it's, what it's about and the, you know, how, how much scope the, uh, uh, the, the, the site has got. The other input that I would just suggest on top of that would be the competition. Like to actually search for those terms and see is it the same pages that are ranking? Mm, and if yeah. there are different pages ranking for them, well, that might indicate that there's a little bit more varied competition or there might be some different intent in the query. Um, so I'm not discounting. Like I, I would generally, I'd also, I totally agree with you that you'd go for one page for something like this because they're very, very similar. And I would say Google would probably see them as, as close synonyms, you know, of each other, whether it's got systems on the end or not. But mm. if you search for them and you see different pages ranking or significantly different results for both those keywords, it might be a good pointer that actually you, you may get better value by having multiple pages. But like you don't just want to create two pages that are very similar and you just swap in key you know conveyor keywords in one you'd want to have a justify a justifiable reason to write both those pages so it might be that you actually you could target one with a with a product page and the other one you could product you could target with let's say an informational page which then links to the product page so it could be like why would you want to buy conveyor a conveyor system i don't know something like that there, there's probably ways to do this but but Check the competition. If the pages that are ranking for both terms are very similar or nearly identical, well, then you go with one page. If they're very different and from different sites, you might want, want to go with two. Just a suggestion. It, it, context is everything here. Thank you, Richard. OK. Let's go to number 12 on our run list, uh, Farzan Ahmed. Um, gee, this is a night for links, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, what is the best internal link ratio on a post? Um, Farzan goes on to say, uh, what is the best uh, referring domain and backlink ratio for an expired domain? What is the best outbound links and um, referring domain ratio when pitching for a guest post? What is the best internal link ratio on a post? None of this is that to do with SEO, I don't think, really. I think it's it's fringe stuff. It's fringe stuff. It's, yeah. it's where somebody like uh, Neil Patel or something, and they're just... Wakes up one morning, spouts a, a, a bunch of crap, and uh, people just say, "Yeah, this is this is the new thing." 
but also what what is a like if a ratio is one thing compared to another so what does what is the best referring domain and backlink ratio does he mean like what's the best ratio of referring domains to backlinks for an expired domain it's it's i'm sure there's people who are very clever and who make money from expired domains and seo and i'm sure there's people who are very clever and make money from from guest posting around the place but um yeah it's i don't think like i don't think any of us are going to have a good answer here are we no no i i th th this is yeah this is getting to be uh, a bit too specialised for my taste. Um, it's uh, it's all a bit snake oil. Um, it's uh, someone has written uh, a a white paper about this and has pitched it around as being gospel, and I don't trust it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, I'm about as much as I want to read about links uh, for this week. Thanks very much for all that. <laughs> um, and it's thank you for watching time again. We've done it, guys. We've done it again. Um, we've answered all of the uh, or reviewed all of the questions asked. Uh, we've actually missed a few because we were offline for a, a week or two. Um, and um, but we, this, this, from this week onwards, we, we, we will have caught up and we won't miss any more. I can't go without thanking uh, you guys, uh, Richard Hearn, Tim Kappa, Masataki Wasa, David Rezan. Um, your contribution uh, is just immense and uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, I must also thank people like Ammon Johns, Brenda Malone, um, Richard Hearn, and, and uh, all the people that, that, that answer questions um, through the week and give people rapid answers on the WCA Questions Facebook group. We'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Um, but for now, it's good night. If I can figure out how to stop this thing. Well, just build some links and some links to the links, and that'll stop it. Thank you, David. And maybe a few guest posts will help. Thank you, David. <laughs> I, I had a couple of WhatsApp messages earlier about guest posting. Um, you know, I could forward them to you. <laughs> okay, and we're gone. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, we're still recording. Really? That's, that's that, that it says is up true. there. It says up there. So we can say ours. Yeah. How does this happen? Stop recording. Stop recording. Stop. Stop. <laughs>